Welcome family. God bless you. You know, it is just a wonderful day for us to rejoice in the things of the Lord. Today is one of those days that God is just moving as he always is. It's us that need to be getting in that space with him. And so today we're going to get into some really important things that I believe are really going to bless you as your eyes are open. But first, in order to have our eyes open, we need to actually wake up, right? Because if we're asleep, we're not open to seeing anything. And so before we get into opening our eyes, let's pray so that they may be open. Father, I thank you today in the name of Jesus. I praise you, Father Yeshua, for this message. May every word be led by you. May we go, may we go forth understanding, seeing, and doing. Father, we praise you for what it is that you bless us with today. Help us to be moving in the further greater things of you. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. Now, today we're getting into waking up, knowing Jesus, and loving your families. I want to be, and I'm going to be in the book of Luke. Now, I've already shared, I don't know how long ago, about the prodigal son and some things about his father that were really quite fascinating to me. But as we are getting into where, where we're going to be going in, in Luke 15, I want to share that I happened to read two headlines today of of two young men in their 20s who were recently drafted to play professional sports that passed away suddenly. And and so that is something that we're seeing more of. And so there really isn't a time to be thinking that I can go and do this tomorrow. You you may not be able to. And we have to move in a way where we're operating in a now time. Now is the time to wake up. Now is the time to know Jesus. Now is the time to love your families. There will be no going back. When Jesus called the disciples and he said, follow me, some said, well, let me go back and let me go. And he said, no, 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 no. Now. Now, we need to be moving in that now time because there won't be that opportunity to go back. There, there won't be. Now is the time. And so as we get into a few things here, I want to, I want to tell you this, that, that one is really waking up. What are we waking up to? We're, we're waking up to one this now time. We're waking up to the importance of knowing Jesus, fellowshipping with him and walking with the Holy Spirit. Number three, we're waking up to the distractions of this world that, that are going to draw you away from the things of the Lord. And I'm Going to, I'm going to dive into some of those elements so that way you can rebuke them and come back to your first love. And, and so we really need to wake up to these things that are happening around us. And, and you need to know Jesus. I'm, I'm going to tell you that before I get to all these other things that you really need to know Jesus. You need to not be playing religion. I'm not telling you to go and, and, and pretend we're too far past that. This is coming to a place of knowing Jesus, knowing him. See, you can know everything about him that you, because you have a photographic memory and you can recite every single word of every single book of every single bi part of the Bible. All great. Do you know him? If you don't know him, you've missed the point of the entire exercise. Every single thing is about knowing him. So before I get into waking up, I'm going to just ask you, do you know him? And this is, this is the most important question that you should ever be able to answer yes to. Do you know him? If you don't know him, well, welcome. He is my best friend. Jesus is the one that saved me. And I know that he too will save you if you so allow him. Now, how do you come to know him? It's steps, just like any relationship. But... The first thing that you do is just ask him to be the center of your life. Just tell him that you need a savior. It's really that simple. You can press pause and just say, Jesus, well, after. <laughs> but, but no one I'm going to tell you than hip hop. Jesus, I need a savior. I can't do it alone. Will you be the center of my life? 
I made a mess of my life. I, pen, I just made a mess and I need a savior. It's really that simple. Your relationship with him is, is as unique as God creating you. And so that is step number one, know him. But once you know him, okay, you receive him as your Lord and Savior, then it's time to grow in that relationship. So some of you may have given your life to Jesus many years ago, and then you dabbled. Now it's time, it's time to come back. It's time to come back to your first love, which is part of the waking up. Wow, where am I? If you are not discerning God's absence from his presence, that's part of waking up. It is recognizing where have I been, not where he's been, because he's been watching you the whole time. He, he, he's like waiting for you to wake up. As you wake up, then you can come back to your first love. So when we get into Luke, and then we've got to love our families, and I'm going to share with you some things related to, related to that to encourage you and really help you to not get caught up in, in the world's ways of wickedness, we may say. However, it is in 15 of Luke, then drew near unto him all the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners and eateth with them. So typical, right? The religious will say, How dare you go do this? How dare you enjoy life? How dare you do anything except sit with us and judge everyone else? Right? Maybe some of you have, have left that. Maybe some of you have experienced the onslaught of that. So all these people are within their hearts judging everyone else. Now, here's the other thing, too, that I want to point out. Oh, the Pharisees and the scribes murmuring, This man eat, receiveth sinners and eateth with them. Yes, you know why? Because he could. See, it's only those that can't that don't because they can't and they won't. What do I mean by this? And, we, and, and I'm not going to take five hours to get through this, I promise you. But what I mean by this is this, is that when love is within you, you and greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, you can do things that other people can't. Meaning, um, you can hug a vaccinated person and a non-vaccinated person. You know why? Because greater is in me than in he that is in the world. See, it's fear and all this other nonsense that is keeping us divided. Well, I don't want this and I don't, you're not, why would you even allow that to enter your hemisphere? Because if God is with you and he's protecting you and you're walking with him, it doesn't matter. It didn't matter to Jesus when he spoke to the woman at the what? Well, you can't, no, you honey can't do that, but Jesus surely can because he did. You can't, but he can. See, so these Pharisees are coming from a place of religiosity within their spirits. Well, God, they can't look at him, look at him. Yeah, look at him. Look at him. Look at him. This man, this man receives sinners. Yes, he does. This man did because he could, because of who he was. So who are you? See, when you start to really recognize this, this is all nonsense that we're living in. This side, that side, this side, this side, all nonsense. Rock the box. Rock the box, break the sides, get out and go love. Get out because this is these are things that are destroying families. They're not seeing one another because, well, you're not this and I am and I'm not this and you. So what? Are they not your family? Guess what? I'm still sitting here and you know what? I hugged my twice vaccinated mother. Oh, every single day that I could. And guess what? I am here to testify to it. You know why? Because I walk not in fear. Did anything happen to me? Um, no, I still look like I'm all intact. Maybe there's something that's happened that I'm not yet seeing that I need to wake up to. However, I am telling you, no fear is going to keep me from giving my mother a hug. And I did for all her days. And you know what? Um, I'm glad I did. You don't want to be in a position where you allow these things of judgment and criticalness and fear to overwhelm you to where you wish you would have hugged your parents before they pass or your children before they pass because nonsense stuff of the world. See, we're operating kingdom minded, not what well, you know, then don't. Then you're going to sit here with these Pharisees and all the other judges and the scribes of, of today's society wishing they, they could do something, complaining that they can't. It's not that they can't. It's that their minds are limiting them and they're limiting God. Because if you really trust God, you can go and do, you could go hug anybody you want to. And it so shall be well in your soul. This is nonsense stuff that the world is sowing. And if you allow it to come over you, you are bound to it and it will overwhelm you. No. So I hugged my mother. 
And guess what? It was on, on, on her bed in the hospital that guess who was there with her? Oh, Miss Olive. Oh, yes, she certainly was. Miss Olive, she would not leave. You try to touch her. She's like, I am not leaving. This is my grandmama. I'm not going anywhere. She is right here, and this is where we are going to be. See, the world has its ways of doing things all, but the, the Pharisees and the scribes, they had a say by their limited mindset, by their narrow-mindedness. This is why many people hate Christians, because they're so narrow-minded. Now, I'm not saying I hate anybody, but many people do. Get out of the mindsets here, see? So this man received his sinners and eat it with them. Yeah, because how can they not be sinners if nobody shows them the way? How can the how can those that don't like Jesus come to know Jesus if, if they never hear good things about Jesus because they're too busy being judged by those that know him? That's like saying, let me help you out of this pit while, I, while I'm putting my... my foot on your face as you are down in there. How can you get out? <laughs> you need help. I'm here. I will help you today. Get out. We're not in the slums. We are out. We're not in the pit. We're out. We're going from pit to palace today. So, and he spoke this parable saying unto them, what man of you having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, does not, does not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he findeth it. How many of you have lost family members? Let me tell you something. I know that I do. Do they know? No, they're lost. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> but you know what? I'm going to pray for them. And everything they're going to hear about me is how much Jesus loves them. I don't need to beat them. I don't need to, I don't need to whack them around. No. You just love them. You just love them. You just love them. But we have to wake up to see the love that's within us. What love is in you that's been dormant because of what you walk through? Oh, rip it off. Rip it off. Let the let let they say what? Let your freak flag fly, isn't that what they used to say? No. Let the love within you love. Just let it out. Let out the love. Let the love out. That's what we need to see on this earth. And when he found it, he lay it on his shoulders rejoicing. Oh, yes. Like the little bunny rabbits. There were just three little bunny rabbits that, 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 that my painter just brought to me. Like, oh, look at these bunnies. And then they just hand, like, what do you do with three little baby bunnies? So precious. So precious. You just want to hold on to them. And they were so cute. That's how we have to really be looking around. Wake up. Wake up to the plots and the ploys. The enemy wants us to be like these Pharisees. Can't love, can't be around, got to be isolated, got to be triple mass. You better, you better plug your ears and your eyes and all of these things. Cannot do this, cannot do that. No, don't you dare laugh because you know what? That, that might cause someone else to laugh and we cannot have laughing and you cannot praise the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. Not today. No, no, no. You better go do that in the silence of your, of your bathroom with the fan on because somebody might hear you. Yep, that, that's right. They're going to hear me. That is absolutely right. And you know what's going to happen when they do here? They're going to come to the Lord because they're going to see how good the Lord is. See, today we're moving in a way for this to be penetrating to you. To you. Wake up. Wake up. This, the stuff of these, of the Pharisees and the religious people, we got to get away from it because there's too much life to be living. And you got to know Jesus. And love your family. So here this man is. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me. I have found my sheep which was lost. Notice that it was his friends and neighbors. So his neighbors may not have been his friends, but he didn't care. He called them forth. How many of you know your neighbors? Well, you know, they're kind of weird. Yep. Yeah. They probably think that of you too, right? They're all weird. Everybody's weird in today's society. Like, who are we kidding? Who are we kidding? Celebrate the weirdness, right? Isn't that what they say in Austin? Now, verse 7, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety-nine just persons with no need repentance. What is around us is opportunity everywhere. There is opportunity everywhere. Everywhere there is opportunity. I'm going to show you something. I write this on my boards in my classroom. But I want you to see this. Pardon the... Okay, I'm going to hold this up so you can see this. Now, hopefully you can see this. The whole thing. Okay, hold it again. There we go. Now, what do you see? 
Some of you may say opportunity is nowhere. Others may say opportunity is now here. Opportunity is now here. It is here for you. It is yours for the taking. It is yours now to wake up and to recognize the goodness that is all around you and to see, wake up, the times are now. These two young men lost their lives suddenly. You want to wake up to what is around you so you can walk in the fullness of knowing Jesus so that on that day you will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, and you will have done all that you could to stand. And then you will have loved your family. There is nothing when we're looking at where we are, there's nothing more important than your relationship with the Lord, knowing the Holy Spirit, and, and really walking out your life on this earth in his presence. You need to know Jesus. There is really nothing more important than that. There will always be a Twitter fight. There'll always be there'll always be someone confused. There will always be another an, another situation always going on somewhere. There will always be more swamp creatures. There will always be something to fuss and fight and argue and bring contention about. There will always be all of that, but there may not always be another moment for you to come and enter into the presence of the Lord. There may not always be another moment for you to hug your children. I will never have that opportunity to ever hug my mother again. Miss Olive won't ever get that again, won't ever touch her paws, won't ever see her little curled up tail, won't, won't ever hear the snores that live. It's gone. You don't want to be in a position where you are forsaking what is in front of you to do anything else. I'm so very thankful that I only had 11 years with my mother, but in, and I cared for her the 11 years that I knew her, and I hated her for quite a long time. However, when I started praying, Lord, change me. I was able to begin to see her the way that the Lord saw her. I was able to begin to see that the things that I looked at and judged were where I was. These, these Pharisees are looking at what this man is doing by what's in their heart. Other people are going to judge you as you go and as you go be around other people that the world might deem inappropriate. This is why this is why the people's princess, Princess Diana was so loved because she loved people. She didn't care what their ailment was. It didn't matter. They were people. She had love within her. We have to come back to this. We have to wake up to what's being, oh, we may say a little bit moving away from us to get it back. Come back to our first love. Know Jesus and love our family. So what else does he say? Either that woman having 10 pieces of silver, if she loses one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it. And when she found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I lost. Have you ever lost your glasses? I have three pair. I know where two pair are, and there is the one pair. And let me just say, it will be a hallelujah when they, when they appear somewhere. I don't know where. They're here. Somewhere. <laughs> just one. And you got to wear them to find the other ones, right? Some of you know exactly what I'm talking about. However... There is such joy, joyfulness that comes over this lady, the one piece. She's got it. She's got it. She got it. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of angels over God, over one sinner that repenteth. See, while the Pharisees were here judging the man for hanging out with the sinners and spending time sharing of good with the sinners, they could have been doing the same thing. But what was in them was keeping them distracted. When you wake up to the distractions that are keeping you separate from your family, you'll wake up. See, when I woke up, it didn't matter what my mom looked like. It didn't matter where she was. It didn't matter because the Lord transformed me. That was the greatest prayer that I could pray, Lord, change me. Three words, Lord, change me. Like That's a, just change me. I was the one that needed to be changed. Not her. Well, diapers, but you know that's in the latter days that we all will probably maybe go through. I don't know. <laughs> but here's the deal. She was who she was. She was loved. Everybody loved her except me. As the Lord changed me, 
I was no longer like the Pharisees. It changed my life forever to be able to love the least of these in my mind, not realizing I was operating as the least of these because of what I wasn't allowing to enter into me, which was love. Once love entered in, well, now it's a whole different thing because now it doesn't matter where you are, what you come from. I'm interested in where you're going. Tom is a great demonstration of, of that. This ministry did so much to help him, and it is incredible. This man that was set to, to, to do drugs and die, we got him into rehab, and now he's on the streets preaching in Minneapolis and brought almost 40 souls to Christ. That's what it's about when you wake up and you begin to see your greatest love and you begin to move in a way where you love your family because you start to see family in a whole new way there's presence of the angels over of God over one sinner that repented and he said a certain man had two sons and the father of them said to his son father give me a portion of goods that follow to me and he divided unto them his living and not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living how many of you have come to Christ and then you saw the greater thing? I'll tell you, it isn't so great. The grass may be greener on the other side, but you still got to mow it. And as you begin to see, it's going to take a lot more to mow it and a lot more upkeep than when you come back in the rest of your first love. And when he spent it all, there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want. Well, sure, because what he had was more fulfilling than what he thought not. He came home to his love. See, the enemy's wanting us to think things are better over here, to be distracted and not love our loved ones because of the mistakes that we may think that they made that maybe they didn't. That just might be us that has that in our minds. God is greater than any mistake that any of us have made. But the enemy wants to use that to keep us separated. So here this man is, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and set himself into the fields to feed swine. So now he's with the pigs. How many of you have kind of lost your way? You know where you need to be, but you're struggling. You need to wake up. Wake up, I'm telling you that there is nothing more important than waking up, number one, because it means you're still here, but waking up spiritually to the revelation of who God is and knowing Jesus. As those things entered into my life, my life began to be transformed in the things of the Lord, where there really is nothing else more important. On, on our prayer call just a week ago, I spoke very clearly, please do not send me things that are not of testimonies or things pertinent to kingdom because it disrupts my spirit it is like nails on a chalkboard the worldly things are for those that are in the world kingdom things are for us who are in god's kingdom and kingdom minded kingdom principles kingdom power kingdom love all of those things that that are here for us are are where we need to be when you wake up to moving in that direction you will begin to see where you're going in the things of the Lord. You will begin to see, and as you wake up, you begin to see, it doesn't matter what political part, I don't care if, I really, in all honesty, don't care what political side you're on. That doesn't, that's not, that doesn't matter to me because I'm interested in your relationship with the Lord and helping you grow in the things of the Lord. The political shenanigans are, are a distraction from kingdom living doesn't matter which side. You're welcome. You voted for this candidate? Great. You voted for that one? Great. Let me tell you how much Jesus loves you. That's more important. But you see, the enemy wants to keep us not awake, but he wants to keep us dimmed down. He wants us fighting. The vaccinated, the unvaccinated, let's keep us fighting. Let's get men and women fighting. Let's, let's, let's keep this going on. Let's, let's have these people of all of these different religions and races and this and this and this and colors and ages all fighting. Let's bring in every ism that we can come up with and keep the people fighting. And I say no. When you wake up to saying no and you wake up, you will say no, no. I don't have time for that. I'm not going to give my life to that. This man had to wake up. 
He started waking up. He's now hanging out with pigs. How many pigs are you hanging out with? Do you smell like him? Hmm. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husks that swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough to spare, and I perish with hunger? He came to himself. You see, when you wake up to greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world, and when you get that revelation, you will begin to then be climbing out of the pit to be moving in kingdom-mindedness to where their life is. It doesn't matter what the world is going and dealing with because God, you recognize, will be providing for you regardless. But many have, have dabbled and then gone out to go check out all the city lights and brightness of this, that, or the other, and then you need to come back because you got hired servant see but he says i will arise and go to my father and i will say unto him so he's having some self-talk here david also did said within himself i have sinned against the against heaven and before thee recognizing that he's recognizing okay where his sin is the error of his way and i've already taught on like the father side of it but i'm no more worthy to be called thy son make me as one of the hired servants so as you begin to wake up and you recognize that this bible all of this Bible is an I don't want you to go to hell book, and it is the greatest love story of all. You begin to see every story of redemption and God's redemption for people out of love by who he is. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion on him and ran, fell, fell, fell on his neck and kissed him. Think about the angels and the Lord rejoicing when we wake up. Think about that for a moment. When you set yourself before the Lord because you have, some call it an epiphany, it may just be that you're having a coming to yourself, that you within yourself are getting with the God in you to get an agreement with the God in heaven, that you are recognizing where you are and that you fully need a Savior and that you're coming to yourself to recognize, I can't do it without you. I need a Savior. I got to surrender because my way of living is proven to be not living at all. It's not even a way. I don't know which way I'm going. His Father had compassion on him, just like God our Father has compassion on us. This is why we need to wake up, because the world will tell you there's no hope for you. The world will tell you there's no way out. The world will tell you that because you've had an abortion that you should just die. The world will tell you because you you made a, a, a choice to be vaccinated, and, and you now maybe you are regretting it. The world will tell you there's no hope. Those are all lies. The world will tell you that there's no hope for your marriage, and that you know what, that your, your spouse ran off, you deserve it, and that, that, that lie lie when you wake up to the lies that you maybe have been listening to or seeing for far too long that this is the way you need to do this and this and this and you can't do this because you're a christian you can't go there and you can't do this and you can't do that the jesus is not i can't when you wake up to the freedom that you have in christ you'll be coming to jesus in an entirely new way your relationship will be revitalized you'll be refreshed and renewed renewed in the things of the lord your life will never be the same in Jesus' name, which will allow you to love your family regardless of the mistakes that they've made. My mother always loved me. It was me that had the love issue. I love my adopted parents. I love my, my biological family because of the God in me. See, but the enemy doesn't want us to do that. The enemy wants us to live in another way where we are looking at what they've done. Well, you made a mistake. Yeah, who are you? Look at you, right? You're making a mistake. We don't want to be doing that. So when we lay claim, greater is it he that is in me than he that is in the world. And we can look and see this man, this father saw his son and just kept, just grabbed him. Grab your children today. Tell them that you love them. They need to hear it. This younger generation, the millennial generation, has lost more people in their generation than was lost in Vietnam. And it's over 62,000. I believe there were 58,000 and change lost, and some, we don't want to say change, but and then some, in Vietnam. And we're almost at 60, 62,000 of young people that have been lost. Hug your children.
They need to hear that you love them. They need to hear you care. They need the phone put down and they need to be heard. They need time with you. You need time with your parents as well. They need to hear they are forgiven. They need to hear that you love them. I'm so very thankful that during that time with my mother for those, for those years, that everything was brought out forth onto the table. And it wasn't as much me telling her what a terrible person she was. It was the Lord transforming me so I could love her and understand. And what she went through is not something that anybody I would ever wish to go through. But as the Lord moved me, there was, there was, no, there was no, no regret of anything I wish I would have said. The time was the time. The time for you is now to wake up. The time for you is now to love, to know Jesus. And the time is now for you to love your family. These families that just lost their children are, are I'm sure, devastated. Great, bright men with, with fantastic potential that we may say should not have died of natural causes or the, is, is what's being stated. We can make any inference we want. However, setting all that aside, you don't want that to be you. You want to make certain that the people in your life right now that you care about know that you care. They need to know that. They need to hear it. They need to hear it. He says, and the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and, I, and in thy sight, and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best robe and put it on him, and bring a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet. Oh, hallelujah. Bring hither the, fat, the fatted calf and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. Hallelujah. Isn't it, isn't it great even then that there's a celebration, there's food. It's Tuesday. We're eating. Woohoo! I mean, heck, it's 1.30 one on a Wednesday. We got to eat. I mean, that seems to be the, the, the way. No wonder why people are, well, skinny. For this, for, for this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. We've all gone through those times where we may have experienced that, that time away of, of a spiritual depravity. Now is the time to be moving back, to be alert, to be alive, to wake up, to be knowing Jesus, to thank him for what he's done because you are here. He is not finished with you yet and you're just, he is just getting to be beginning to get with you. <laughs> your, your future is right here and it is now. Now his elder son was in the field, and he came and drew, drew nigh to the house, and he heard more music and dancing. And he called every one of the servants and asked them these things meant. And he said unto them, Thy brother is come, and thy, thy hath killed the fatted calf, because he hath received him safe and sound. And he was angry and would not go in. Therefore his father came out and entreated him. Isn't it funny how family dynamics work? There's not a family on earth that did not have family dynamics. Look at look at Noah's family. Look at David's family. We could look at Saul. We could we could see some family dynamics. One had other murdered and sleeping around and raping, but all kinds of stuff. No family's exempt from drama. But here, this man was instead of happy that his brother is home. Well, now it's not about him. See, we got to sometimes set aside our our. We got to set. We got to put ourselves on a shelf. Take the elf off and take the take the place. Just put yourself on a shelf. This father is rejoicing that his family is there, that his son is back. The devastation of this man going through not knowing where his son is or what happened would probably be aching, as many of you know, when your children go to war. You don't know if they're ever going to come home. You don't know where they're at now. Many of you live in war-torn cities, and you never know if your children are going to come home or get caught in the crossfires of the gunfires. Now was the time to be recognizing that the earth is not what it was five, 10 minutes ago or 20, 20 years ago. We're in a different time. We have to reprioritize where we are, who we are, how we are, and why we are. We have to move in a way that we set aside these things that would cause us to be uprising in our flesh and move by the things of the Spirit. And he said, answering to his father, Lo, these many, these many years do I serve thee, neither transgressed I at any time thy commandment. And yet thou never gavest me any kid, a kid that I might make merry with my friends. The kid would be a goat. Oh, so because I didn't do these, oh. But... But you see, that son that made that mistake needed that to know that he still had value. But the other one couldn't see that. He couldn't see the devastation of what happened to this, to this one. 
this this young man his life is forever transformed this other man here could not see the devastation because he's only looking inward but as soon as thy son was come which had devoured thy living with harlots that was killed for him the fatted calf oh so because he went disobeyed he gets blessings and so he said son thou art ever with me and that is all that i have is thine it was meet that we should make mary be glad for this thy brother was dead and is alive again was lost and is found many of you have have relatives that are that are lost that you were going to be the only way for them to come forth to be found this is why when we go back to the very beginning of the chapter, we can look and see how, how, these, how these, these Pharisees would be keeping them from being found. Oh, look at him. They're hanging out with them. Yeah. I looked down on my mother for many years because of what I saw her in the natural to be. I was mad at God for a long time. Really? This is, this, this is really? Like, God's like, really, daughter? <laughs> look at you. Ooh. Woke me up, changed me, moved me in a way to love. And it was glorious. It was glorious, and I'm so very thankful for that transformation. So as you pray that, that you are awakened, and I'm not talking about woke, broke. I don't care about th that. They'll, they'll destroy themselves. I'm talking about you coming alert in the wokeness, in the wakeness, in the awakening by his word that you wake up to the depravity that maybe you've allowed yourself to live in and you wake up saying, no, 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 I'm not receiving this. I'm moving forward in the things of the Lord. I am walking and my ear is healed in the name of Jesus and so shall pop and I will hear every single thing I need to for all my days and it needs to get in order. Don't think we've not had that conversation. I love my little ears. Yep, get in order. Hurry up. <laughs> That's maybe how you need to talk to yourself. But here's the thing, as you come before this and you get before the Lord, Lord, where have I been? You need that awakening. It's not about what the world is making it to be. It's not about social media. It's not about that. It is not about anything else but knowing Jesus. And as you come to know him, you will be able to love your family. You'll be able to love your husband and see him more than where you have been in recent time. You'll be able to love your wife regardless of whether or not she is stressed out or gained five pounds or what, however. You'll be able to love your children, recognizing that it's been hard for them. You'll be able to love your distant relatives, those that you may not speak to because they voted for that guy. Whoever that guy even is, I don't even know. But they voted for that guy. Well, I can't. Yes, you can. You know why? Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And so as you go forth today, rejoice in the greatness of God within you. Rejoice that you have the opportunity right now to be awake. You have the opportunity to right now to know Jesus, to really know him, not know about him, but know him. And as you do, share him with your family and love your family. And, and I only had 11 years. Many of you have had your whole lifetime. Now is the time to ask the Lord to do a thing in you so you can truly love them, so they can be set free. My mom couldn't come to the Lord until I loved her. But I had to get to the place of love with the Lord to love her so she could come to the Lord. The judgment in me, she needed freedom. And those letters that I wrote her when I first, when I first met her, she, was, she received the Lord. She received the Lord. Let me tell you, when I baptized her in, the, in, in water, let me tell you, she got stuck in the tub. I'm like, Miss Mary, we got to get, we, let me grab the, let me just grab the Windex. We got to get you out. The tub was small. We got her out. And then she was baptized in the Holy Spirit with evidence of tongues. And then her life was, was transformed, not by me, but by the God in me that moved through me as I surrendered. As you do that, your family's going to grow. Your family's going to experience transformations. It may not be fair that you were the one that asked to do it, but you know what? Get over that because life is not fair. This is all for good, as Joseph tells us, that everything that he went through, everything that I went through was for good to be able to be here today to share with you these things so that you too can be multiplying the good as you go forth in your life, not only for you and the freedom of your relationship with the Lord, but for your family and for the future generations of your bloodline. 
So rejoice. Rejoice that the prodigal son came home. Rejoice that this is you, prodigal sons and daughters, that you're coming home. Rejoice in being awake today. Rejoice in knowing Jesus and rejoice in being able to love your families. Tell them, tell them they need to hear it. They need to hear it. There is nothing more important. Never let them leave the house without saying, I love you. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Do all you can to love what you have right at this very moment and to cherish it because this is the only moment that you have. And I'm grateful for those moments that I had, but you need to be grateful and take these lessons Take these lessons from me because nobody else is probably telling you this. They're probably agreeing with all the other things of the world, but I'm going to agree with this word, and I'm going to tell you how great God is, and I'm going to tell you that your family needs to hear that you love them and that Jesus loves them too. That is my message today. Praise God for it, and we're going to pray. Father, I thank you for love. I thank you, Father, for this word, for this word. That is the word that blesses us all. We thank you, Father, today that your word is a love that reaches the heavens far beyond. We thank you, Father, today that you have made the way. So we thank you for waking us up to you. We thank you, Father, that we love you. Thank you, Father, that for those souls that are coming to know you right in this very moment from the Northeast, West, and, and, and South. For every person who hears this and says, yes, I need a Savior, we rejoice. Let the angels be rejoicing right now. Father, we thank you that there is forgiveness reigning now among families, that it doesn't matter what they've done, what they look like, what mistakes that they made, that we all fall short. So we thank you, Father, that we love people more than we hate what they've done. So we thank you for families restored. We thank you that we all are being restored to you as we are restored to them, to be restored to you in the fullness on this earth in heaven. And I thank you, Father. I thank you for the work that you did in my life to bring me to a place to be able to impart this so that lives and families will be restored on this earth. We thank you, Father, that you're using every single one of us in this time. Father, today we pray for the people and the families that have just lost loved ones. May you bless them, Father. May you be with them, and may they come to know the love of a Savior. We thank you, Father, that as we all go forth, that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. May we let the light shine, and may we be continuing to season the earth with the salt that we are. We thank you, Father, for who you are in us and who we are becoming. We praise you, Father, and we thank you for these things in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. And to God be the glory, saints. Know that I pray for you every single day that God is good. He's always making the way for us. And if you have any testimonies or prayer requests, you know what, post those in the comments because whatever you're going through, I know that the solution is right here and he's going to make the way. And you know what, we pray every single day. It'll be seven years this September, every single day. I have perfect attendance. To God be the glory. That is how I roll. <laughs> always show up yes consistency is key yes so we pray every single day 12 p.m central standard time you can go to julieblundministries.org get the country codes and dial in and we just pray so i welcome you to join us god bless you know just how much jesus loves you we do too here and i look forward to the next message that the lord has for us god bless you till next time bye-bye